Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is Tend to Life. I'm not going to give you guys the whole spiel because most of you guys I think are returning subscribers by now, but for those of you who are stopping by for the first time, this is a true crime channel and this is where we talk all things true crime all the time. So if you enjoy the video and you haven't been here before, make sure to subscribe at the end of this so that you get notified of upcoming live streams and new case videos as they drop. Or you can even subscribe right now, guys. It won't pause the video. It won't stop anything. Just hit that subscribe button. All right, so you guys have been DMing me like crazy, asking for me to cover this case. And you'll, I'm going to explain what case it is in just a minute here. The reason why I didn't right away is because there were very few details out. But you know me. You know I love to sleuth. You know I love to dig. And I have gotten quite a bit more information regarding this case and this story, including some images and some interviews and things of that nature. And this is the case of little Paisley Schultes, who was found after missing for two years. She was found alive underneath a staircase inside a home in New York. And I feel like out of all of the missing children cases that we have been talking about and that we keep hearing about, this at least is one that has somewhat of a happy ending. So let's get right into it. Tend to life with Annie Elise starts right now. In 2019, four-year-old Paisley Schultes and her then 13-year-old older sister were placed in the custody of a legal guardian. The sister's parents, Kimberly, who's 33 years old, and Kirk Jr., who's also 33 years old, had lost custody of the two children. The reasons are still a little bit unclear. We've heard little bits and pieces and rumblings, but for the most part, it is still completely unclear as to why they lost custody originally. However, it has been said that the legal guardian that Paisley and her sister were placed with was their grandmother. And the grandmother, or slash legal guardian, lives in Spencer, New York, which is approximately four hours northwest of Manhattan, right there on the Pennsylvania border. On July 13th, 2019, authorities were scheduled to go and pick up the girls. However, while Paisley's older sister, just at 13 years old, was in school, Paisley's parents allegedly fled with their four-year-old daughter, Paisley. Paisley had last been seen at her guardian's home back in 2019, but had not been seen or heard from since. When Paisley's grandfather was asked if he knew about Paisley's whereabouts, he said that he hadn't seen her since she was reported missing either, and that actually Paisley's mother, Kim, took Paisley and fled and moved to Pennsylvania. And he says that he didn't know where Paisley or Kim were. So over the last few years, people have been working tirelessly trying to find Paisley. Missing persons flyers have been placed everywhere. Things have circled on social media, but still no sign of Paisley. And at this point, it's now been nearly three years since anybody has known about her whereabouts or has even heard from her which is extremely unsettling and scary in any situation because typically the longer amount of time that goes by, the less likely that you will have a happy ending and the less likely that you will find a child either A, alive, or B, had not suffered some drastic, horrible, you know, abuse of some sort while in captivity. However, over the last few years, police did suspect that the parents, the biological parents of Paisley and her sister, had abducted Paisley and had taken her. So they searched their house multiple times, but all of those searches yielded no results. But that all changed on Monday night, February 14th, 2022 just a couple of days ago, because police received a tip from an undisclosed source that was credible enough for them to take seriously. And this tip was that Paisley was in fact living in her grandfather's house, that same grandfather who said he had no idea where Paisley was, that he hasn't seen her since she was reported missing, and that he believed that Kim, Paisley's mother, had, had fled with Paisley to Pennsylvania. The grandfather's house is in Sagrates, New York, which is approximately 150 miles away from where Paisley was reported missing. Now again, the police deemed this tip as credible enough that they went all the way out to this property and they were going to search it. Socrates police detectives, state police officers, and state detectives all went out to that house late on Monday night. This team, along with state troopers, executed a search warrant on the property at approximately 8 p.m., 
And while executing the search warrant of the property and inside the house, Detective Eric Thiel noticed something that was a little bit off. He said that after hours of searching, he noticed that something wasn't quite right with the staircase. Particularly, he said that something didn't seem right regarding the construction. So Eric began to pull the stairs up. As he was pulling these stairs up, Eric used a flashlight to look inside the cracks of the wooden planks, and inside of those cracks with that flashlight, he was able to spot a blanket. Now, why would a blanket be underneath a staircase? That makes absolutely no sense. As they continued removing these steps to get further and further in to see what else was underneath that staircase, he says that he then saw a pair of tiny feet. Underneath those stairs, they found a cold, damp, wet, and dark place where this little girl Paisley was hiding out with her mother. And police described this as a makeshift room underneath these staircase, underneath this closed staircase leading to the basement of the residence that they had make made shift this entire entire room underneath those stairs. Police also added that it was very clear to them that this room had been frequently used and that this wasn't just a one-off hiding place. Images released show not only an extremely filthy staircase, but also it shows a pair of children's mud boots, a panda stuffed animal, clothes, and blankets all filling this space, all damp, all wet, all completely dirty. And the detectives say that it was pretty dingy and it was extremely cold. They say that there were blankets laying on the concrete floor, but that that was it. And that even those blankets that were shielding you from the concrete, the cold, dry concrete, were completely soaked and drenched. It was, it was cold. It was blankets that were laying on the ground on the concrete floor. They were completely soaked, extremely heavy. Paisley went missing in 2019 at four years old. Her parents, Kirk Schultes Jr. and Kimberly Cooper, had just lost custody of Paisley and her sister. As detectives began pulling Paisley out from underneath this staircase, not only did she appear to be extremely scared and terrified, but they realized that she had been hidden under there for quite some time. Her family had been hiding her under that staircase for years. During all of those previous searches, that was where they believed that they were hiding her out. So Paisley was visibly frightened as they're pulling her out of this staircase. Paramedics quickly evaluate Paisley, and thank God, by the grace of God, they say that medically, she appeared to be in good health. However, it was later learned that Paisley had not been attending school. And while that makes sense, because if she was abducted, which she was, her captors would of course not want her going to school because she's a missing person and then, you know, the jig is up. But they also weren't even homeschooling her. This means that for nearly three years now, Paisley has had zero education. And this is a very critical window for a child between the ages of four and now nearly seven years old. No education, no learning to read, no learning to write. Those are that window of time is such a critical time in young children's lives where they are just a sponge and soak up so much and learn so much. So for her to not receive any form of education in that critical window and those years is just devastating. Now, what's weird about this situation and what struck me as odd is although they found Paisley underneath the staircase, they did say that Paisley had her own bedroom and that her name was on that wall. So I don't believe that her parents made her always stay underneath the staircase. I think it was probably utilized more of a hiding spot or even possibly as a punishment for when maybe she was bad because they said it did appear as though it was used frequently. But the police say that they did find a bedroom with her name on it. And even more than that, in the backyard of this home, they had an entire playground with a huge jungle gym set up, which is so weird because neighbors say that they never saw any children playing there. So was she never allowed to use that? Was it put there to almost taunt her and, you know, make her behave and, and do whatever they wanted her to do? Or was this placed after the abduction took place by the grandfather? Still so many questions that have not been answered. I'm just shocked because they seem like just regular people. Some neighbors told us they never saw Paisley outside. Paisley's mother, Kimberly, was charged with custodial interference and endangering the welfare of a child, both misdemeanors. However, she also had an active warrant out from a previous family court issue that she had dealt with. So she's currently being held in the county jail. 
Paisley's father, Kirk Jr., was also arrested with those same charges regarding custodial interference and endangering the welfare of a child. Kirk Jr.'s father, Kirk Sr., Paisley's grandfather, who had said he hadn't seen her since she was reported as missing and he had no idea where she could have been, he thought that the mom had taken her and fled to Pennsylvania, he was also charged. And he was charged with a felony charge of custodial interference and the misdemeanor charge of endangering the welfare of a child. But what really, and I'm going to use this expression again, guys, even though I hate it, what really grinds my gears about this is that both the grandfather and the father were released with appearance tickets. The mother is still in jail because she had that other warrant and that was active at the time. And so she's still in jail, but they were released with appearance tickets. How at all is that justice in this case? And how does that also guarantee Paisley's safety? How does that guarantee that they are not going to go and try to snatch her right back? Going back to the search, police say that they had searched that house for nearly four hours before discovering Paisley underneath that staircase, meaning that she had remained quiet for several hours while she was hiding under there. Now, for any young child who is seven years or younger, That does not seem like an easy task to stay quiet for that amount of time. So my question with that is, is this something that the family routinely practiced with her? Is this, again, a place that she was, you know, isolated and put in the past, whether for punishment or for whatever? Because how would a young child know to remain completely quiet as multiple officers and state troopers and detectives are searching a house unless they instilled such a great level of fear in her that she really had no other option but to stay quiet because she was scared for whatever reason. Once police got Paisley in the cop car and were leaving this house of just terror and disgust, that's the only word I can really think of, guys, As they were driving, Paisley spotted a McDonald's, and she told the officer that she hadn't had a Happy Meal in a really long time. So detectives flipped a quick U-turn, went back, went to McDonald's, and got Paisley that Happy Meal. And this honestly just like warms my heart, guys. I think that this is such a sweet little footnote in this story, because this little girl who, you know, just had probably been through hell and a very traumatizing experience, and with people even though her parents with people she shouldn't have been with for years it's like she's in the car and she spots mcdonald's and talks about how she hasn't had a happy meal like which to me just kind of illustrates that there's still so much not like goodness and purity in her because obviously she is good but like that she just is such a happy soul and a happy child and that that just makes me really happy So Paisley has now been reconnected with her legal guardian, who is suspected again to be her grandmother, and they are at an undisclosed location. She's also been reunited with her now 16-year-old older sister. And what's great about that too is Paisley says that she still remembers her sister. And I just, again, it warms my heart. It just really does. But on the flip side of that, it kind of breaks my heart because I think about the sister and what must have been going through her mind that fateful day in 2019 while she was at school when her parents fled with Paisley and didn't even grab her to take her along, that they chose her younger sister over her. Now, I can't imagine what that must do to somebody mentally and emotionally, but I would imagine that that has to affect you in some way. And we believe that what happened after that point was that um, somebody informed the parents that the older child had been picked up mm-hmm. uh, by the legal guardian and by uh, county officials at the time. And um, that caused the parents then to take Paisley and flee. Police say that they had received tips on several occasions of Paisley being inside that home. And they say, and I quote, a number of times we would go there and sometimes we were met with resistance. And at other times they'd say, oh no, you can come in and look around. There's nobody here. The child's not here. And our belief is that at the time when we went to the residence, although we were given limited access, they were using this location to hide the child. So here's my question. If you were receiving tips and if you suspected this for so long how did this go on for almost three years i get it she was well concealed under the staircase but if this detective was able to notice some you know shoddy construction work how did this go on for three years it just feels like an epic fail paisley will now begin the process of rehabilitation because police say that they are pretty certain that she wasn't receiving any sort of medical attention over the last several years which similar to the school situation unfortunately isn't too surprising 
and all three of those family members are scheduled to appear in court today. Today. Literally, right now. The, the court hearing started five minutes ago, but they aren't putting it out for the public. You can't live stream it. You can't get audio. You can't get video. So we won't have updates on what happens in that court hearing until hopefully later tonight or maybe early tomorrow. I'm going to be following closely, so stay tuned, and I'm going to let you know every single detail that we learn because I'm pissed off that the two men are obviously out from with the appearance tickets, and I'm wondering if the charges with her previ- the mom's previous warrant are going to be big enough to stick and keep her in jail, and I want to know that there are some protection measures that have been put in place for Paisley, for the grandmother, for Paisley's sister, so I'm going to follow this really closely, guys, and I'll let you know what I learn as we learn it. Police also have made it a point to say that the investigation isn't closed and that it's ongoing and additional arrests might be made. So it's interesting to know, did they have help? Who may have helped them hide out and get away back in 2019? Will other people be charged? We're going to probably learn a lot more in the coming days and weeks, I'm guessing. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so so that you get notified of those updates. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in with me today. Please give this video a thumbs up. Show your support for Paisley and her sister in the comments below. Finally, we have somewhat of a happy ending here. Although I wish that Paisley didn't go through this for the last few years, at least she is alive and well and reunited with her sister and allegedly her grandmother as well. So that's honestly, guys, that's really all we can ask for these days, right? Thanks again for tuning in with me. I hope you enjoyed the coverage and I will keep you updated and talk with you very, very soon. Until the next case, stay safe.